good submarine games needs ballistic missiles because they are one of the most powerful weapons a submarine can hold, and they're one of the primary reasons nuclear submarines exist to this day. But you may be wondering, how has it taken you over six months to get submarines to have missiles? Because it's been six months since the last devlog. Well, that's a long story, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But for now, let's talk about these missiles. So you may remember back in November, I think, I made a video on ICBMs, like Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, and that is mainly for uh, the submarine game. So I made that in a separate place just to like play around with the code and make something that works, and now I have something in submarine warfare that largely resembles this. So I can launch them real quick. You can see they all launch from the things, and I have a hotkey where I can press to lock on to the camera of one of the missiles which is cool and i can see it detonate right now they're all targeted on this little test sphere because eventually i want to add some targets that i can hit like a bunker or a ship or something like that and it will do damage to it and eventually we'll have better vfx for the explosions as well but for now it's just a test of the trajectory and the launch sequence which i think turned out pretty cool so the way the whole thing works is that each of these little hatches is a hinge constraint and I can set the target angle of that hinge constraint. I have a video on hinge constraints if you want to check it out. And that basically allows me to angle them up in a nice animated way without, without actually animating anything. And they're all physically actuated, which is nice. And then we launch all the missiles. Although this is not very really realistic, you probably la only launch one missile at a time. It still looks really freaking cool. So that's the reason I kept it. And all of the missiles have a nice arc trajectory where they land on the target. And they're more or less accurate. It is physically simulated, so they're not always guaranteed to land on target. But it should still work out just fine. Because the launching 12, you, you might, you're going to hit your target if you want. And it'll do a lot of damage as well. So now let's go check out a little bit of the code because I did something pretty interesting that is kind of cool. So let me go to the missile launcher. You can see in here, this is the launch sequence. So what I basically do is instead of just doing a bunch of actions and then calling wait in between them, I use these things called promises. Now promises are a way to basically encapsulate a call that takes time and return a value later. And the main benefit of promises is, is that I can add them to my trove. So my trove is basically what collects all of the stuff that I want to garbage collect when the sub is destroyed. So for example, if your sub is in the middle of launching missiles and it gets killed or, it, or the game stops or something like that, the trove gets destroyed. When the trove gets destroyed, it destroys everything that's added to it. And since we added the promise, this entire chain of code will cease to run. So that means that we can avoid errors when we're trying to reference like the self.instance or when we're trying to reference the missile tube that we're trying to launch from. We can avoid those errors or when we're trying to reference the hinge, we can avoid those errors. And instead of like just doing a bunch of statements like if the left hinge exists, if the right hinge exists, we can literally just the code just will not run because it will have already stopped. Now, I did not make this function library. It's a great library made by someone else. I will link it in the description if you want to check it out. And I can make a video on it if anyone is interested. So this snippet of code right here only handles the launch sequence. As for the missiles, when they're actually in the air, I have a separate component for that. And this works very similarly to the ICBM that I demoed a couple months ago, except for the proportion. So it's basically a PID controller with only the P term. And I also have a video on PID controllers if you want to check that out too. And in that PID controller, the P constant is actually not a constant it's changing depending on the time that the rocket's been in the air so in real life rockets start at a certain speed but as they burn more fuel they have less weight and they accelerate more 
and they accelerate more quickly. So it's like compounding acceleration plus more and more velocity. So I'm changing the proportion by an arbitrary value, and I'm editing each of them specifically because I want the rocket to initially go up a lot and then turn to the side. So it, here it is in Desmos, which is a graphing calculator. So this bottom line is for the X and Z. This is what proportion is going to be applied to correct the velocities of them. And this is for the Y. So what happens is the X and Z don't really have an initial influence. And that's because I don't want the missiles to hit the tor to hit the missile tube and get all out of whack because they're like hitting the walls of the tube. I want it to go nice and elegantly straight up and then I want it to turn. So after a couple of seconds it'll ramp up and then turn. But the Y, the Y axis has to start early because it needs to get height. So it starts at around like six and they each have the same rate of change. So the launch and the end is more or less equal. If they have different rate of change it makes something really weird, and it also makes them a lot less accurate. And so this that's the one change from the ICBM. It's pretty elegant. It makes it so that I don't have to do extra weights and stuff like that to, to like manually micromanage each part of the launch. And also, we have the standard run-of-the-mill explosion with a raycast, which honestly doesn't really work half the time. I will have to fix that a little later and when the missile hits it does damage right now it doesn't really do damage to anything important because it's targeted on that test little thing but i have made it in such a way where all i have to do is set the target position of the missile and it will automatically lock on to whatever is the target position which is great as for the state of the game right now it is still very unfinished and honestly quite broken but you can still order a submarine and i made a nice little menu to order your sub so right now the only two ones that are proven to work is the victoria and the gin class victoria is just a normal attack and diesel sub while the gin is a nuclear warhead sub which can launch missiles so you can press order you spawn in and you can drive it around and you can launch missiles to the target now one issue is is for some reason in my edits and countless reworks torpedoes are now kind of broken <clears throat> it's a really it's a really interesting phenomenon using the vector forces so if i fire the torpedo you can see it works fine on this normal plane it may be a little too jittery but that's okay but when you angle it down i'm only doing a and d and it levels out for some reason which is quite interesting it probably has to do with the body gyro and how it affects the vector force at the same time. But that is something to figure out in the future. So what happened to the project? Why has it been so long since I last made any progress? So it's a typical story of game development. So back in November, I took a little break from the project to work on like ICBM and some other stuff. And I came back and, oh, what do you know? Uh, the good people in the Roblox open source community released Wally, which is a package manager for Roblox, similar to Node.js or NPM, I guess I should say, Node package manager and Cargo for Rust. And I was like, okay, cool. So I went to my project. I made a Wally.tom. I reworked all of my projects to use the new package manager which is great honestly if you want a video on it just make sure to comment and it was really nice and really good and it's really streamlined my workflow but that took a lot of time and what do you know knit got a massive overhaul to work with wally and just to make it more modern it basically became a collection of modules that were less interconnected and more just there and so I had to rework again because the component module, which is one of the biggest, honestly, the biggest thing I used from it became its own separate module and I was able to use it on its own, which is good, but it also required a lot more reworks. And then components got an update and it added these things called component extensions. So extensions are really cool because they allowed me to make a lot of my parts of my code that were a little janky, a little more secure and more robust. And they just looked a little better and they sat better with me. 
And then I needed to work on UI. And that's why I had that little mini map and the depth counter and the speed at the bottom. Those are all little minor additions because I was trying to make a massive UI update, but I ended up stopping because working with Roact and Rodux is good, but it's a lot hard to couple your systems with it in the long run. And so what I ended up doing is I rewrote that a bunch of times. I got bored with the GUIs, so I went back and forth between getting new modules and dealing things with updates because Sletnik, the guy who made Knit, made a bunch of other modules that I wanted to incorporate because they all were really nice. And then also, the same person who made the Promises package also made this package called Commander, which is like a admin console type library and I, I've never used that before I'm like okay sure I'll try it and that took another couple weeks to get working as well so thing after thing after thing I kept on reworking the game and along with all of this I wasn't really satisfied with the whole structure of the game as a whole I wanted everything to be more modular I wanted it to be more expandable I wanted it to be more scalable so I kept on reworking the base component system to work with subs and missiles and torpedoes all to be the same and all to work with each other so I have a lot of less code reuse and I was basically trying to make the perfect back end for my submarine game <clears throat> but when you're making a back end not much progress is being made at all so when I was going through back and forth like writing a lot of code spending a lot of hours on the project nothing was happening and that was really demotivating because when you make a game, you want to see the game being made. You don't want to just keep on changing code and then spend a lot of your time, but then not see a lot of work come out from that. A lot of visible work come out from that. And that can be very demotivating. So that, along with school and my wrestling season, I kind of got burnt out. As well as I started learning some new languages like Haskell and some other functional programming languages, which then again, the knowledge from that came back and I started using a lot of functions from the table util library, which has a lot of functional programming paradigms in it. And so I started changing my code to look like that as well. So rework after rework after rework occurred, no progress. So around like March-ish, I stopped working for a very long time and only started back right now in the summer since I have more time. But I was honestly questioning whether or not to return this project and whether or not to finish it. Because both me and my partner were extremely busy. We were both doing a lot of stuff. And even though the idea was really cool, I absolutely love the idea of a submarine game. Especially since I'm really into Tom Clancy and his books like Red October. I still just didn't think I had the time. And I was so in love with functional programming that I didn't really think I could return to Lua. But... One of my subscribers mentioned to me that when you look up Roblox Submarine Games in Google, my video is the very first thing to come up, which is kind of crazy. So that means that there's a there's a void, a content void for this sort of content, and a lot of people would really enjoy it. So that means I really should finish it. So I will finish it. I'm not sure how long it will take. I'm not sure how long this will take, but this game will get finished whether I want to finish it or not. And that's a very good lesson to learn. And luckily I have my subscribers to hold me accountable, but some people don't. So the main takeaway from my experience is you, you can't really give up on projects. You can't, you either have to set your project's goals a little more manageable or you have to finish them. Because if you make a habit of not finishing projects, you'll never be able to finish anything. But also, it's okay to take breaks. Because now, since I've taken a break from Roblox for a bit, I've delved into functional programming as another paradigm. I've learned a couple new languages. I'm now able to come back into this project with a fresh mind, look at my code in a new way, and I'm able to innovate in places where I wasn't able before. And if you're a perfectionist like me, you also have to realize your code especially in a video game, will never be perfect. And the main goal is to get something out that is fun to play and relatively glitchless and is secure and safe for exploiters. You can't make a perfect backend no matter how much you want to. And I always want to make perfect code. Whenever I 
make a new game project, I learn so much during my project that I end up hating and resenting the code that I'm writing at the moment, which is kind of bad because code can still be good even if it's not perfect. You can still make good code and make a good, perfectly good game even if it looks like crap. Maybe hard to expand, but that's why you can make a game and then rework it later. But that's about it for this video. Thank you if you've gotten this far to listening to my rants. Hopefully you'll be able to learn something valuable to you and for your game projects. Because even though I've watched countless and countless videos from other creators, not only on Roblox but on other platforms, keep on telling me, hey, finish your games, get it done, you can't give up. I still almost did, and that would have been pretty bad. So I will continue making videos on Submarine Warfare. I'm not sure when they will come out because, again, I'm doing this as a fun project. It's not like it's going to have a fixed release date. Just whenever I have time, I'll be working. And I'll still make other Roblox videos as well, of course, and keep those up. So like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more Submarine Warfare content and other Roblox scripting content. Comment any questions or suggestions, especially for all the technology I was using in this video. If you want any videos on that, make sure you comment. And without further ado, I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.